guys, Pogu here, and welcome to the next episode of Java 101. In this episode, we are going to learn how to make methods. You may not know it, but you already know how to make methods because this right here is a method. It's the main method which is used by Java. It's the first thing that's called when you start a Java program. Today we're going to learn how to write custom methods so you can write your own. Uh, they make it easier for, um, instead of directly accessing variables, you can um, use methods with them. You can also use methods to do things um, quickly and so on and so forth. What we're going to do as an example is we're just going to write a method that will uh, print out a message with a prefix. Now, that's not the most useful um, kind of method, but especially, uh, you know, once you get start getting into class design and then other, you know, different projects, methods are incredibly useful. Imagine trying to write a an entire game in in just the main method. That's crazy. Even something as simple as like a like a nice uh, calculator program with a nice window that it's not easy to do. So I'm going to show you how to use how to write your own methods, which is a very good thing to know. So right below the main, we're going to write our method. You cannot declare a method inside of another method. We're declaring it at the class level because it's another one. And this one will exist um, along with, it will uh, coexist with the main method as its own method. So the first thing that we're going to do, and this will explain a bit um, why the main method is public set void main string bracket args. Um, first, you're going to go ahead and write public. This is the visibility modifier, and it's not too important right now, but eventually you could get into more, like if you were working on a class and you wanted to have stuff that only that class could access, you could use a different visibility modifier. Not important right now, just don't even worry about that. Next, you're going to write static. The reason why you're writing static here is because we're going to be calling it from the main method, and everything used in a main method must be static. So if we're going to call this from the main method, which is static, it's a static context, everything called from it needs to be static, therefore we're going to make this method static as well. Next is going to be the return type of the method. So void for the main method means it just doesn't return anything. If I were to put int, it would return an integer. So like health, say I had a method for getting the health that would return an integer, I would write int there. In this case, print method is going to be a void. Uh, the print method is going to be a void because we're not returning anything, we're just printing something. And then we're going to call it print. You're going to put your parentheses. Now inside of here, this is where you can put your arguments or parameters. These are what are passed to the method, and they are what the method uses. In this case, uh, the main method is passed. That's a string array of arguments. You don't really need to know what that means, but basically this contains all of the command line arguments. So when I go to start this, I could you know specify custom arguments and use them. That's not really important. But this for this one, we're going to take a message. Uh, so in order to do this, you would first write the type, so string, and then we're going to call it msg for message. Notice that you're not setting msg equal to anything, because when this method is called, you're going to pass what you want it to be, and that'll make more sense in a minute. Inside of here, we're going to say system.out.println um, adventure, and then plus message. So we're printing out adventure, and then we're printing out whatever the message is. Now, of course, this isn't a very terribly practical use, but... Um, it is a good example, and we'll get into some more useful examples eventually. So now we can go ahead and actually call this method. So we're going to want to replace all of our system.out.println's except for the menu, because I don't think it would look right to have adventure and then this like bracket with the number. I mean, if you want to do it yourself, that's fine, but I just don't think it would aesthetically look nice. So um, let's go ahead and change it first for the what is your name. And... Just like uh, we call println, this is actually a method, and this method takes a string. It's very similar to our method. So we're going to go ahead and write the name of the method is print. So we're going to write print, parentheses, with the um, semicolon at the end. 
Then print wants a string. So the string we're going to give it is what is your name. What we're doing is we're calling this print method right here. This method is being called, and we're giving it the string, which is what is your name. This is going to print out adventure, and then what is your name, which is the message that we gave it. So we can delete that, and then you can change this again to print, whatever. Now when we go ahead and run it, you'll see it says adventure, what is your name? Because by calling our own uh, special print function, uh, method rather, it's going to print out adventure, and then it's going to prefix the message with adventure and the colon. So that's basically how methods work. Um, say you actually, say you decided that you wanted to do this, you know, in your final project, it's much easier to write a print method than to have to call system.out.println adventure colon space and then add whatever string you want. It's just, it saves Ton, it saves a ton of characters by doing it this way. And of course, there are more practical uh, ways that you would use this, but um, this is just a good example to introduce it. Now, um, if you want to have a method return a type, then you would use the return keyword. So I'll show you a quick example of that. Um, this might not be too helpful, but let's just have a method that um, returns the maximum health and the maximum, uh, yeah, just the maximum health, because uh, right here we're checking if the health is greater than 10. Let's just have it, let's just write a method for this. It's a good example. So we're going to write public static. All of our methods right now are going to be public and static. Then this is for the max health. So we're going to call, this is going to be an int. So it's going to return an integer representing the maximum of health. Um, then for this, we're going to call this get max health, and we're calling it get max health because it gets the max health. If we were setting something, we would call it maybe set max health or set whatever. Um, and then print is just print. It's not getting anything or setting anything. It's just doing something, so we're calling it print. Uh, then put your uh, curly braces. Notice that this does not take any arguments. We don't need to give it or parameters. We don't need to give it any parameters because it's just returning a value, it's not actually handling any data. Then you're going to go ahead and write return, and then you're going to write the value that you want to return. So in this case, we're going to do return 10, don't forget your semicolon. So this is an int called getMaxHealth, and it returns 10. So anytime this is called, this method is the equivalent of the number 10. Now, of course, this isn't the most useful way to, you know, use a method, but um, it's also a good example. So right here, we can change this to get max health. So we're replacing 10, the constant, with get max health. Say we wanted to change this, or say we wanted it to fluctuate based on the level that they're at. In that case, get max health would be more helpful, and rather than programming in a solid 10, we would set it to, um, you know, we could change it here. One other thing to note that um, up here we have, we're initializing health to 10. You could also initialize it to get max health. They're starting out at the maximum health, and remember, this method returns an int, so we're setting this int called health equal to get max health, and that also works. So I believe that that's the only time that get max health is used. Um, those are the two different ways that you would go about using it. And then you just, of course, want to go ahead and change um, all of these system.out.println's to print. And I believe that's it. That should be all changed except for the menu. And that's about it. If we go ahead and run it, um, I'll just show you quickly. So you can see, go to the forest, you discovered the treasure after a long day of hiking, go to the store, you bought a health potion, restored your health, and if I do it again, you'll see that I have max health. So you'll see, first of all, that it is um, prepending the uh, adventure um, tag, or whatever you want to call it, to each message that we gave it. And second of all, you'll notice that health was sent to get set to get max health, which is 10, because we um, went to the forest, which took away one, then we got a potion, which brought one back, and then we are at the max health, which means that um, this get max health, which returns 10, works in both instances. 
So that's all for this video. This was an introduction to methods. Methods will become more um, useful uh, in a little bit, but uh, right now uh, there's, it's still a great thing to know and a crucial part of object-oriented programming. You literally, I don't know if a single uh, program or you know bucket plugin that I've ever written has does not have multiple methods in it. Very, very useful. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, please click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.